Okay, everybody, it's been a few months. Had the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra here in service for a while. I've made a couple additions here. I think uh, last video was three batteries. I now have uh, five and two inverters set up and installed. Been running great, no real issues. Definitely making it through the night now, and I'll go through a couple numbers with you, but I wanted to recap uh, my setup here. So I have a high voltage and a low voltage solar array. The high voltage is 4,000 watts and the low voltage is 1,500 watts. I have high voltage powering this setup here and the low voltage powering this one. I did try this guy as a solar simulator because it does 60 volts out and 10 amps. I connected it and the inverter didn't really like it and this didn't really like the load so not meant for charging apparently it uh, started to smell and got kind of hot and whatnot so i just wasn't going to use it i was hoping for it but that was going to be my solar simulator until i get my next set of solar panels up which will be next spring but for now i separated the high to this guy and the low of my existing panels over here and like the last video, everyone's wondering where our ground is, so here's my new grounds. All right, this guy down here is grounded as it should be. Grounded down there to the ground port. Um, my incoming is my off the shed. Here's my, my low voltage side and my breaker, and then my uh, high voltage side coming into here, out, high voltage, Coming in the side here, low voltage coming down here. Oh, kind of hard to get to, right? There's a low voltage input, so each one is having a feed. So that's been doing well. Um, I'll show you my solar panels here as kind of a recap. Got the big spider going, right? So there's my high voltage, eight panels, 475 watt each panel and over on my shed currently in the summer configuration pointing up as much as I can get them are six 250 watt panels I'll show you those in a minute but those are the low voltage side so there's my panels currently and I'm going to add for the net for the second inverter probably along the side here along the house facing south to get all the southern sun I can when things get short days and cold so they'll probably go up there next spring with our, of course, quick disconnects for the Tygo panels to shut the panels off per code, should there be a fire. Uh, I have all my circuits over to the EcoFlow here, except for the spa, the two air conditioner compressors, right? The microwave, the hood, and the oven in the kitchen because I didn't deem those necessary of battery power. Can totally live without any one of those. But there's my current setup for all my circuits in the house that I felt necessary to put on battery. Everything is currently running. All right, I'm getting good charge off the high voltage solar array. So I'm getting 3K in there and the low. Is getting a kilowatt which is great so a kilowatt in and only 140 watts out this is load balancing this is fantastic with 500 watts over here so right now the house is only pulling what six seven hundred watts and I'll show that to you here but the other question I got was what has been my power usage so here's a quick snapshot of what my power usage was from our power company before I started to put this in, which was the first of the year, so that would be that January mark. And you can see how high it was in January, December, November, but after January when I started installing, you can see the, the sharp, sharp drop off of using the power until July. But like I said, my air conditioners were not part of this setup. So a little bit of air conditioner going on, and then of course we're in the cooler temperatures, the power is falling off again. But nowhere near far less than half of what I was off the power company as far as consumption. So quite the difference there. 
Um, the current unit, the way things are set up, I have the two batteries configured. You can see there's some of my current numbers. Batteries are feeding the house. House is only consuming, you know, almost 700 watts, pretty good. Here's each battery as they stand currently. So my four stack has 24 kilowatts on it and my single stack battery, the new inverter two, has got the one battery at six kilowatts and shows their input. So it's doing fantastic that way. But as far as numbers, I know everyone's gonna be interested in this guy. So there's what I am for the day, right? Week for this current week, right, is only the beginning of October, but more interestingly is the month. And here's for the month so far. Now we're not very far in this month, right? I've used very little grid, but 99% power. And I'll show you as we go through September's numbers. All right, what is that? 76% of it was off power or off, off the batteries, off the solar. A little bit off grid, like, you know, solar is not a replacement. It's an augmentation. And here's August. August, I used 76% of all battery and, what, only 24% on the grid for cloudy days or didn't get a full charge or whatever the case may have been. And here's the year for 2024. Again, I started in January, February, and you can see how I came online. The power grid was going down, and you can see the steady climb in this one. So for the year so far, 78% has been on my solar setup here. All grid free, right? Just that little bit of 22%. Oops, focus. Sorry about that. So there's some basic numbers for you. Been doing pretty well. Um, numbers are looking good. So the other addition I made to this would be the generator setup. So I thought I would show you the generator. And we'll do a quick test on that and then we'll look at what the app does and how everything charges. So let's go take a look at the generator. And also here is my summertime shed setup for the panels. I've got them raised high for summer and I will remove those struts and let them lay with the roof for the winter to get that full winter sun. Hopefully it, it won't uh, hide behind those houses, but residential, you know. So there's the panels. All right, and they'll lay down for the summer, or excuse me, for the winter. So for my generator, now you need to be very careful on this, and it was brought to my attention as well by a friend. The EcoFlow is electronics, sensitive electronics, and most generators are what's called dirty power, right? So they're off a of pure sine wave by a certain percent, right? The, the frequency doesn't quite get there and it's not a pure sine wave. So what you need to be most careful of is the THD, the total harmonic distortion. EcoFlow says 10% or less. Most generators, as good as they are, have you know, 15, 20%, so pretty dirty electricity, which is good for motors, right? Like power tools and whatnot at construction, but not for powering sensitive electronics. So this guy is 8%. This is the Westinghouse uh, 11500 TFC, 8% total harmonic distortion, right? The THD, so adequate for uh, connecting to the EcoFlow. It's a tri-fuel. I've got it set up for uh, natural gas. It'll do the propane, right? Have the propane tanks around for that. And then, of course, gasoline on top. But here's what I did. I mounted it to a pallet so I could get underneath it and do oil changes as I need. I'm, I didn't use the wheels that came with it because I didn't want it that portable. And I extended the exhaust because I could only run it when it's coming out the exhaust right here, only out the door. Otherwise the CO2 sensor will kick in and stop the unit. So I extended the exhaust. I used 
1200 degree sealant on all of my joints. I kept a flex pipe here to act like the rubber isolator that's on the generator itself because the frame is mounted or the exhaust is mounted to the frame and the engines, right, just like a car, are mounted on rubber mounts to keep the vibration down. So I put in a flex mount to keep the vibration of the engine away from where it's mounted to the frame. So one inch exhaust and I went directly to inch and a half pipe. I went to the junkyard and I found, as you can see here, a Honda. Uh, this was a, a Honda Civic that was in there and it had one in, one and a half inch pipes. So I attached to that to quieten it down and to keep the uh, back pressure on the engine uh, as minimal as possible, I went with bigger pipe. That's why I went with the inch and a half to try and keep the back pressure down to not overwork the engine. And it goes through the shed as appropriate. It's got the high temperature sealant. It's overcut in size through the shed so that there's a big air gap. And then I filled that with the same high temperature sealant. I put in Dura Rock cement board as a heat shield where needed. And I ran a gas line over to the shed to feed the natural gas. And then there's my exhaust to my rain cover. And then of course we're out on the shed so I have my quick disconnect. And I'm gonna put more panels up on the southern side and wire it through here and just follow my existing lines through. But let's go ahead and do a generator test. So I will connect my lines. Turn on my gas. Turn the generator on. Get it ready to go. Come back into my feed line. Turn my secondary on. Disconnect valve. And we will watch the generator here. Kick in on the app. So here's how it's running now. focus and we will start the generator we'll give it a minute here to run and get up to temperature too bad on the noise level outside seems to be exhausting fine much quieter than it was without that Honda muffler on there and now everything's running on battery power solar we will come up here and we'll turn off our grid feed. Everything just clicked. All right, you can hear all the clicking going on. We're still outputting power. Come down and we will turn the generator on. Generator feed is on.
There it goes. It just clicked. Everything just clicked if you heard it. We're back to green. There's the message. And I just heard the generator change tone. It's coming under load. Lights are yellow. And it switched over to generator. It's pulling seven and a half kilowatts. And you can see the lines it's going from the generator over to the house. So it's powering the house at 662 watts is what it had, what the house was demanding before. And now our flow for the batteries is going down into the battery. And here's what this looks like. Just for an example. So if I let the generator run for the next hour and a half on my four stack of batteries, we will be charged. And you can see it's bringing in six kilowatts on the four stack off the generator. Then if we go to the new single stack, it's also pulling in four and it'll be charged in 32 minutes. So an hour and a half from their existing charge levels off the generator to fully charge up. That's pretty awesome. And with multiple fuels, right, tri-fuel, it gives me some, some good options. But there it is running off generator, charging the batteries and supplying everything the house needs. There's my full stack, this is the four. Of course, it's not putting out the generators taking the house demand right now. And then here is the new single stack unit. Also not putting anything out, doing nothing but charging at 4.6. And there we go. That's my current setup. Hope I answered some questions from the last one and let me know any questions on this one. But uh, super fantastic. Can't wait to finish my second stack. One more battery over here, four more over here, and another set of high and low voltage solar panels. Be really good to go. That's the ultimate goal at this point. All right. Thanks, everyone.